Given the importance and relevance of this algorithm, I've created a dedicated section to dive deeper into the world of attention mechanisms. As many of you may already know, this is the conventional attention mechanism introduced in the original transformer paper. It is widely used in transformer-based models, with its operations progressing from higher to lower levels, moving from left to right, as illustrated here. However, we won't spend much time on this standard implementation, as there are already plenty of excellent explanations available online. Instead, we'll focus on the YOLO implementation variant. In YOLO 11, an alternative approach to the attention mechanism was introduced, and YOLO 12 builds upon it. If this looks intimidating at first glance, don't worry, I'll walk you through it step by step. By the end of this section, I hope you come to appreciate its elegance and practicality. This implementation diagram was created based on the only source of truth available, the Ultralytics code. I've included a link below for your reference. We can also see how the three convolutional layers from earlier fit into this structure. The QKV convolution, the positional encoding convolution, and the final projection convolution. Notice that all of these are linear convolutions with no activation functions applied. To start understanding what this all means, let's begin at the very start, and we will analyze it by going through the steps of the forward pass. As we saw earlier, the input tensor to the area attention block has the following dimensions. A batch size of 1, 64 channels, 30 pixels in height, and 40 pixels in width. This means that for our batch of 1, our car image, we have 64 feature maps, each with a spatial resolution of 30 by 40. Here we can see the first 32 feature maps. And we can also zoom in on one of them to see what kind of detail it's capturing. Now, what do these feature maps actually represent? As you may have guessed, each of the 64 channels captures distinct features of the input image. These features were extracted by the earlier convolutional layers before the data reaches the attention mechanism. Let's break this down. These feature maps capture diverse aspects of the input, from edges and textures to shapes, patterns, and even specific object parts, like wheels or faces. Together, the 64 channels build a rich and detailed representation of the image, where each pixel carries both local context from its surroundings and global context from deeper layers. This layered understanding sets the stage for the attention mechanism to analyze spatial and feature relationships more effectively. With that foundation in place, let's return to our input tensor. The first operation we apply is a pointwise convolution, which produces a new tensor named QKV. There's no activation in this layer. It's a purely linear transformation. The 64 input channels are projected into 192 output channels. In essence, we've applied a linear convolution to generate the QKV tensor. And by the way, for those interested in the details, each single output value is the result of multiplying the 64 input features at that spatial position by 64 learned weights corresponding to that output channel, and then adding a bias term. Since we have 192 output channels, and each channel has 64 weights plus one bias, this convolution layer contains 192 by 64, giving us 12,288 weights, as well as 192 biases, one per output channel. Each channel has its own unique set of weights and a bias, which are applied uniformly across all 30 by 40 spatial positions. However, the weights and bias differ from one channel to another. All of these weights and biases are learned during training through forward and backward passes, and they're optimized for the architecture of the attention mechanism that we'll be looking at shortly. But before we get there, there's one last thing I want to highlight. While it might look like these weights are evenly distributed or serve similar purposes, the output tensor actually divides into six distinct zones, as you can see here. The weights learned for each zone are influenced by the specific role or objective that zone is meant to serve. These two zones, while holding different values, serve similar purposes. The same goes for this other pair, and again for the final two. The similar colors indicate that they share similar roles, even though the exact values will differ. So while the structure may appear uniform, 
The underlying learn parameters differ significantly depending on the intended function of each zone. Let's now explore what all of these actually means. Now, before we can use this tensor, we need to perform a few additional transformations. First, we flatten the rows and columns into a single dimension. For visualization purposes, we'll keep the original shape, but mentally note that this gives us 1,200 spatial positions in the tensor. Then we transpose the channels and values to prepare the data for the attention mechanism. We continue with the forward pass. Since our area value is 4, the QKV tensor will be reshaped and the updated values for B and N will be used to generate the Q, K and V tensors. Let's take a closer look at the transformations applied to the tensor in this step. Again, since the area is 4, we'll start by reshaping the tensor into four separate areas. Next, we return a new tensor with the same data, but a different shape. This step begins to reveal how the 192 features are actually composed of 96 features for each of the two attention heads. Then, using permute, we rearrange the dimensions of the tensor. And last, but certainly not least, we split the tensor into the Q, K, and V components, as shown here. This is where it connects back to what we said earlier about each of the six zones serving a specific purpose. Notice that the Q, K, and V tensors all share the same dimensions. Each of them holds spatial information corresponding to the four areas and the two attention heads. Now that we have our queries, keys, and values, we're ready to introduce the attention formula that ties them together. The standard formula follows the scaled dot product attention mechanism. Here's how it works. The query is multiplied by the transpose of the key. The result is scaled by the dimension of the key vectors. It's then passed through a softmax function to compute attention weights. These weights are applied to the values to produce the final output. This approach is foundational to many state-of-the-art models like GPT. However, YOLO 12, just like YOLO 11 did before it, uses a variant of the standard attention mechanism. While it retains the core principles of scaled dot product attention, it changes the order of operations. The transpose of the query is multiplied by the key first. After applying softmax, the result is transposed before being multiplied by the values. Although mathematically similar to the standard method, this variation may be optimized for vision tasks or specific requirements within the YOLO architecture such as improving computational efficiency or simplifying implementation. While attention operations are performed simultaneously for all the query, key, and value tensors, taking advantage of efficient tensor operations like matrix multiplication and parallelism, it's important to note that each area within each attention head operates independently. In other words, areas do not look at one another during the attention process. Each one performs its computations in isolation, focusing solely on its own local area within a specific head, as you can see here. So if we focus on any specific area and head, the query, key, and value tensors can be viewed as two-dimensional. We'll use this 2D representation to better visualize the operations performed during the attention process, and then we'll return to the full 4D tensor. Let's now use our queries, keys, and values to perform what's called scaled dot product attention. The steps are outlined to the right. Let's walk through them. First, we transpose the queries to a 300 by 32 shape to enable matrix multiplication. Notice that the queries are arranged top to bottom with each query containing its 32 features. Queries represent the specific features the model is trying to focus on, like edges, textures, or objects, Keys represent potential regions or parts of the image that might contain relevant information for those features. When we compute the dot product or matrix multiplication between the queries and keys, the result is the attention matrix, which captures the similarity between them. You can think of attention weights as a measure of how relevant each key is to a given query. Here's an intuitive example. Pixel 1 query asks, this is what I'm looking for. Pixel 2, key response, this is what I have to offer. The dot product between Pixel 1 and Pixel 2 determines how much attention Pixel 1 should give to Pixel 2. 
A high attention weight indicates that the key's information is highly relevant to the query. This process is repeated for all other pixels, pixel 3, pixel 4, and so on. Essentially, every pixel compares itself to every other pixel in the grid. This means that each pixel, whether near or far, can attend to any of the 300 pixels within the same area and head. While we've been referring to them as pixels, it's more technically accurate to call them spatial positions, since each one corresponds to a location in the feature map. This brings us to the attention mechanism's main strength. Every spatial position gains global context by attending to all others within this 300 by 300 grid. Instead of processing each location in isolation, the model considers information from every other position in the feature map. This enables it to capture relationships between distant parts of the image, something traditional convolutional layers struggle with. Whether linking parts of the same object or understanding broader scene level patterns, attention provides a flexible, dynamic way for each spatial position to weigh the relevance of all others, effectively enriching local representations with global insight. However, the raw attention weights aren't interpretable just yet, they still need to be normalized. Without normalization, the attention weights lack a clear relative meaning, making it difficult to determine how much importance each key contributes to a given query. That's where the softmax function comes in. Softmax transforms the unnormalized attention weights into a probability distribution, ensuring the weights for all keys sum to one. This makes the weights interpretable, representing the relative importance of each key to its corresponding query. And with that, we'll end this video and jump into the next one as we prepare to visualize the attention scores.